Now, what if I told you there was a way to dramatically increase your returns in the stock market without opening a margin account or even borrowing high interest money from the bank? Well, although I'm definitely coming across as one of those scammy stock market experts trying to sell you their $600 course like you may have seen in the ad before this video, everything I just said is 100% legit. And all you have to do is take advantage of exchange traded funds or ETFs to amplify your returns by hundreds of percentage points. But just like anything that sounds too good to be true, there's always a catch. What is going on guys? My name is Nick and in this video, I'm going to be talking about leveraged ETFs and showing you exactly how they work, but most importantly, why they can be extremely dangerous to most investors out there. Now, if I had to take a guess, I'd say that most of you out there have never even heard of a leveraged ETF until until today, and that's because it's a subject that's rarely talked about in the YouTube finance community, and probably for a good reason. So what exactly are leveraged ETFs? Well, we first need to understand why they even exist in the first place, and that is to give investors the opportunity to leverage their returns in the stock market. Now, when I say the word leverage, think of buying your first real estate investment property. It's likely that you're not going to have a whole lot of cash on hand because you're so new to the game, so what are you gonna do? Well, go to the bank and ask for a loan, of course. Now, generally, the bank will allow you to contribute 20% towards the value of that home while the bank will contribute the remaining 80% in terms of a loan. And this whole concept of getting a loan to be able to purchase an investment is something known as using leverage. That's because you're increasing your total amount of cash available to you and when you put this in an investment it will increase your return on investment. Well the exact same concept applies to leveraged ETFs where the leveraged ETF fund will actually use debt to be able to leverage that ETF and increase your potential returns. Now there are tons Tons of leveraged ETFs out there, but one popular one that stands out to me is the S&P 500 Bull 3X Shares ETF with ticker symbol SPXL, where each move in the S&P 500 is amplified by a factor of three. Yes, you heard me correctly. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first heard about this, I was honestly pretty excited. Because I was thinking to myself, well, if I know the S&P 500 is generally gonna rise at a rate of about 7% per year over the long term, then why don't I just buy a leveraged ETF that can amplify my returns in the S&P 500 by 2x, 3x, 4x, or even more? Well, there's definitely more than one reason why, and that is what I'm getting into in this video, which are the dangers of investing in leveraged ETFs. And make sure you stay until the end, because I will be explaining if I would ever buy into a leveraged ETF myself and the reasons why. So as always guys, if you do enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button to support my channel. It really does help me out. And then if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing down below for more weekly investing videos just like this. So with that said, let's jump right into the dangers of investing in leveraged ETFs. All right guys, now the first thing you need to realize as investors is that leverage can lead to extreme volatility and it's a double-edged sword. So of course, if you get into one of these ETFs that's 2x, 3x, or even 4x leveraged, you're gonna be seeing an insane amount of volatility in your portfolio. And the higher the leverage ratio, or in other words, the higher the percent multiplier for that ETF, the more volatility you're going to experience. So obviously, if the market or the underlying ETF that you're tracing is doing very well, then you're going to be experiencing some pretty crazy gains. But on the other hand, you also have to keep in mind that your losses are also multiplied, and hence the term double-edged sword. So for example, let's take a look at the SPXL 3 times leveraged ETF that tracks the general performance of the S&P 500 and compare it to the performance of the general S&P 500. Now, if we just take a look at the past year's performance in the S&P 500, we can see that the leveraged ETF fund was doing very well up to a certain point, basically tripling the S&P 500 until February of 2020 came around when it started to drop like a rock. And as you can see, because the returns are amplified by a factor of three, the leveraged ETF fell three times as hard as the S&P 500 over that insane drop we experienced in March, leaving it in negative territory on the year. While on the other hand, the general S&P 500 index was basically flat over that same period. Now I'll be getting into many of the details in a minute about how this fund actually works, along with a complete example including numbers. However, let's talk about another risk to investors, and that is the ETF fees. Now if you weren't aware already, most ETFs or exchange-traded funds have associated fees that get deducted from your annual returns for managing the fund. And this fee is commonly known as the Management Expense Ratio, or the MER. And unlike most passively managed ETFs that track the general market performance like the S&P 500 index or the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, leveraged ETFs can have very high management expense ratios, typically above 1%. And that's because in order to leverage an ETF, there's actually a lot of work that goes on in the background, and fund managers have to do one of two things. 
First of all, the fund managers can borrow money to be able to leverage the amount of money that they have, and that will incur interest payments. But the second thing the fund managers can do is purchase options contracts to be able to leverage that ETF. And by purchasing options contracts, you're paying a premium every time you do that. So as a result, these fund managers need to pay for their salaries somehow, and that is in the form of fees that you as the investor have to pay. For example, if we take a look at the SPXL three times leveraged S&P 500 index ETF, we find that it has a management expense ratio of 1.01%. And comparing this to the typical VOO Vanguard S&P 500 index ETF, we find that this one has an expense ratio of only 0.03%. So that's over 30 times cheaper. Granted, the leveraged ETF is supposed to be producing much higher returns, so maybe this doesn't matter too much over the short term, but over the long term, I will be showing you guys in a minute, this does greatly affect your returns. So therefore, buying into leveraged ETFs over the long term is generally not a good strategy, and that goes for many other ETFs with high MERs. But now guys, the moment you've been waiting for, let's get into the number one danger of buying leveraged ETFs, and this is crazy. Quite possibly the biggest downside of holding a leveraged ETF over the long term is the fact that the returns will decay over time. Meaning that the longer you hold that leveraged ETF, the riskier it's going to get. Now this comes back to my original point where I thought of putting all of my money into a leveraged S&P 500 index ETF for the long term. Because as we can see from this long term chart of the S&P 500 index, over time it has generally continued to rise at a rate of about 8-10% to per year on average. So if you had the opportunity to buy into a 3x leveraged ETF that tracks this index, doesn't that mean that your returns are going to be about 24 to 30% per year? Well, no, unfortunately, that is where the danger of leveraged ETFs comes into play. And that is due to the simple fact that the funds are rebalanced or re-leveraged every single trading day. And this ends up screwing with the math behind compounding returns as I'm about to show you in a minute here. So I've created an example to help us better understand exactly how one of these funds would perform against the S&P 500 index over a period of 10 trading days. All right guys, so what I've got here is a fictitious comparison between the S&P 500 index ETF VOO by Vanguard and then the three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF with ticker symbol SPXL. And I'm going to be comparing the performance of these two ETFs side by side over a period of 10 trading days. So as you can see, we have the percent return in the share price for each of these ETFs to compare everything side by side. And what you're also going to notice is that both of these ETFs start at the same share price of $100 per share, just so everything is the same. All right, now getting into how this whole thing works. Basically, the leveraged ETF is aiming to multiply the percent return every day of the S&P 500 index by three. So as we can see, the S&P 500 goes up 10%, the leveraged goes up 30%, which makes sense. And so as we can see from day zero, the share price being $100, it goes up to 110 for the VOO fund, which is expected from a 10% return. And then for the leveraged ETF, it goes from 100 to 130. All right, so everything is clear on day one, but everything starts getting super messed up as soon as we go to the second trading day. So as we can see, the S&P 500 drops 9%, say it had a really bad day, and it goes back to its original share price of $100. However, what would be happening in the leveraged ETF is that it drops three times that amount of 27%, and actually brings its share price down to $95 per share. And if we compare this 95 to the original share price of $100, you can see that it is lower. Even though these returns are multiplied exactly by three times the amount of the S&P 500 index, its share price is still lower on the second day. And you may be wondering how that makes sense, but guys, let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. If we drop 9% off of 110, it's not a whole lot. It's only a difference of 10. However, if we're dropping 27% off of 130, that is a much bigger number and it drops even further. So as you can see, if we go through 10 trading days, we end up going through crazy swings in the market, but then end up at the same share price that we originally started at in VOO. And by simply multiplying all of the returns in the S&P 500 by 3 to get to the leveraged ETF's final performance, we're at a share price of 39 when it originally started at 100. And so if we calculate the overall 10 day percent return of the S&P 500 index VOO, we find that it ends up being 0%, obviously because it started at $100 per share and then ended at 100. But then for the leveraged ETF, we calculate the 10 day percent return and that ends up being negative 6%. 
61%. And guys, this example just shows the sheer destructive nature of this type of financial instrument. So just because you think that the S&P 500 is going to do well over the long term or even stay flat, this leveraged ETF doesn't necessarily have to follow that path. All right, guys, so given all of this information I showed you regarding leveraged ETFs and the dangers associated, what is my opinion? Would I ever buy a leveraged ETF? And as you might have guessed, I would definitely not purchase a leveraged ETF. And the simple reason behind that is exactly what I showed you in the last example, and that is that even if the S&P 500 goes up, you can still lose money in a leveraged ETF. You really can't tell how that fund is going to be performing over the long term simply because of how the compounding effects work. Not to mention all of the insane fees that you're going to be paying if you hold this fund for the long term. To me, it just sounds like one of the easiest ways to lose your money in the quickest amount of time possible rather than it being an investment. And on that point, I should mention that these financial instruments are typically not used by long-term investors. They're used by traders for short-term trades only for a few days or a few hours and typically aren't used for long-term investing. But if you can't even predict the short-term moves in the market anyways, then these instruments are essentially useless for most investors out there. So for all of the reasons mentioned in this video, I would highly recommend not using leveraged ETFs unless you plan on just making a short-term move with some money that is play money and doesn't really matter much. But even then, I can't recommend these products at all, so definitely just stick to the basics, guys. Stick to the S and P 500 index ETF. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video or learned something new, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out my channel. And guys, comment down below if you've ever used leveraged ETFs before or if you plan on using them in the future. I would be interested to know. But anyways, if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing down below for more weekly investing videos just like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.